Yesterday's South Carolina Republican primary turned out as expected, with a big win for Donald Trump. Last night in Charleston, former governor and U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley put her best spin on the result. I'm going to count it. I know 40 percent is not 50 percent. But I also know 40 percent is not some tiny group. As for the former president, his Friday night remarks at the Black Conservative Federation Gala in Columbia, South Carolina, continued to overshadow his victory. Black conservatives understand better than most that some of the greatest evils in our nation's history have come from corrupt systems that try to target and subjugate others to deny them their freedom and to deny them their rights. You understand that. I think that's why the black people are so much on my side now, because they see what's happening to me happens to them. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see? That's how far I've come. We begin with CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa, who joins us from Charleston. Bob, this was an open primary in South Carolina, uh, but just 3 percent of voters were black. Do Donald Trump's remarks ab about black Americans give the party any pause here? It's giving Nikki Haley a road ahead at this point, Margaret. She and her campaign believe there are many traditional Republicans across the country who are fed up, not only with former President Trump's legal problems, but his incendiary comments on race. And they believe that they, that could ostracize key voters across the country come November. That's why she's staying in right now, going to Michigan this week for that primary, staying in through Super Tuesday. But there is real worry that as Trump takes over the party and the Republican National Committee, there's no reckoning about how he's handling issues like race and immigration. How long can Nikki Haley stay in the race? As long as there's money. I've been talking to donors over the past 12 hours, and they say they're going to keep pouring money into her campaign and into her Super PAC. But at the same time, they know that Super Tuesday, come early March, that's going to be a real crossroads for her. Going past Super Tuesday, going to be very difficult in terms of organization and fundraising. And she has told reporters in recent days that she's not thinking beyond that at this point. Day to day. All right, Robert Costa, thank you.